Every year, over 600 million tons of plastic waste are shipped to 50 large active dump sites around the world. Dump sites like this one, like this one, like this one. Can you imagine that your job is going to a waste site like this and picking through the trash for long hours, 24-7? <clears throat> That's exactly what these children, the waste picker children, have to look forward to. Because of their small hands, their parents send them to the dump to work at starting at age five. These kids are not going to school. They're not going to join the little league. They're not going to ride the pony when they turn five. These kids are going to the dump to learn how to dismantle our television sets, our cell phones, our electronics with their bare hands, the little hands. Um, they're pulling out the wiring they're pulling out precious metals. This is what they're learning in the early years, and this goes on. Um, and some of the children, of course, are learning how to find our throwaway plastic in mountains of waste. You may think these children are far away. They're in Indonesia, they're in India, they're in Ghana, right? Not my problem. Wrong. <clears throat> We're tragically, intimately connected with these children. We have created the system. We have created their jobs. <clears throat> the problem goes back to the overproduction of plastic waste, which has resulted in an explosion of of, of waste, uh, like I showed you, and um, this waste is going all around the world now. Um, this is the plastic waste trade. <clears throat> Largely, it's the wealthy countries shipping to the low-income countries, and the, the trick of this is that for the exporter countries, it, this waste counts as recycling. So um, it's legal and illegal. Since China pulled back, not accepting anymore, it's just simply going to other countries, Malaysia, um, Ghana, Thailand, Indonesia. And this um, all goes back to, it's a dirty business. This goes back to the tiny hands, the waste trade uh, on the back of these children. And who is driving this? Uh, recent analysis showed that just 20 petrochemical companies are producing more than half of all this waste. Um, this is ExxonMobil, Dow, Sinopec in China. Um, these are the chemical companies that are producing polymers, the five polymer types that are the building blocks of plastics. And on the retail side, these polluting companies, so-called uh, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Nestle, Unilever, leading the way, <clears throat> are taking the polymers and creating the products that throw away plastics, the bags, the bottles, the food packaging that is winding up choking our oceans getting into our food, getting into our body, and keeping the plastic waste trade alive. Uh, producers are planning on quadrupling, doubling, quadrupling production in the next few years. Um, this will just increase this amount of plastic waste going around the world and also carbon emissions. So this will tie the plastic pro, uh, crisis more and more to the climate crisis we're now facing. In developing countries, 90% of this waste is burned, over 620 million tons a year. Uh, 
it creates a very toxic smoke. Uh, waste piles like this are set on fire and they burn continuously. And this is uh, Agbobashi uh, Akragana, where it's the largest e-waste dump in the world. They're burning uh, tires, setting a tire on fire. You see this boy is adding styrofoam to the tire to make the heat uh, rise. And then this girl perhaps is going to be pulling out the metal wiring from a television set, set that's in, in the middle of the tire. Uh, burning plastic is a toxic nightmare. <clears throat> the fire releases a hun a hundreds and thousands of toxic substances, additive chemicals, plasticizers, um, particulates, combustion products, carcinogens, dioxins. And also, the particles themselves are toxic. Uh, we know that in culture, the, and we learned this morning, uh, plastic particles are cytotoxic to human cells in culture. We know about this toxicity, going back to firefighters that are exposed to the same toxic plastic smoke. Uh, we did a study in 2013. Uh, I did this with Dr. Cannon, my colleague at NYU Langone Health, uh, showing that right after a fire response, the blood of the firefighters contained high levels of carcinogens like flame retardants, uh, fluorinated chemicals, dioxin, comb combustion products, even unidentified toxic products. Um, this is because uh, structure fires are actually plastic fires. Our homes are filled with plastics in furniture foams, mattresses, TVs, computers, electronics, uh, insulation even. <clears throat> These are firefighters going into a home where um, a sofa is burning containing uh, plastic foam. You can see that even wearing full gear, they're fully exposed to this toxic cloud, this toxic soup of, of um, chemicals. And tragically, firefighters are dying of cancer. Cancer is the leading killer of active duty firefighters today. It's accounting for more than 70% of active duty firefighter deaths. The risk for this increases with time on the job, which means it's related to the exposure on the job. The plastic waste trade is killing children. They are living out what can only be called a toxic nightmare starting at age five. I want you to see these exposure uh, photographs. They're hard to watch, but uh, can you imagine thinking it's okay as a parent for your child to be in this toxic smoke uh, long hours, day after day. Maybe your child comes home with a headache, uh, coughing blood, uh, bathed in, uh, in the smoke. What do you do? You have to send the child back to the dump the next day. This is totally not okay. This violates every human right I can think of. These children are unable to get away from the smoke. And you can see from these child waste pickers in India, they're trying to protect themselves, but they have no protection, unlike the firefighters. They have no gear. A recent study has shown us that baby poop can, is loaded with microplastics. And this study was again done by my colleague, uh, Dr. Kanan at NYU. Um, children, infants contain uh, blood, contain, uh, children's feces contains more than twice the, the amount that um, 10 times the amount in adult feces, fecal samples. Say that again. Um, 
This means that children, infants, are highly exposed. And it confirms an earlier study showing that, indeed, lifetime exposure to plastic starts in the womb. The study has gotten widespread coverage in the media, and it's raised quite a lot of alarm. This is what I call an example of science exploding a public health issue. We've had several of these in the past. I think you'll remember the issue of DDT and the songbirds dying in the 50s, tobacco and lung cancer in the 60s, and flame retardants in children's pajamas in the 70s. Now, in all these cases, the science prevailed, but it took a long time, 20, 30 years, and now we are very short on time. We are running out. Uh, we need to take the next step to spy, spike this issue, to help the children. Uh, Shaw Institute is collaborating on a study with uh, NYU Langone Health to focus on the high exposure waste picker children. And kind of alarmingly, there's very little data on these children except for studies of uh, lead poisoning from the children that do e-waste recycling of batteries. Um, we need to learn from these children what substances, what chemicals are getting into the body from the high exposure, at what levels. This is internal dose. What are the levels that are threshold levels for disease? When do we see health effects in children going through this kind of exposure during development. These children can serve as windows into plastic health risk for all children. Recently, the United Nations World Health Organization have recognized the dire plight of this, these children and called for action. They've also called for health research. These are the children of the Plasticine these are our children trying to survive in a world that we have created. They have no idea that burning plastic is toxic. Some families even cook with plastic. By poisoning children, we're poisoning ourselves. This says a lot about our ability to safeguard the world for future generations. Um, and indeed, it's a public health disgrace. It's a moral challenge of the 21st century. Can we actually achieve a world fit for children? We are here. Our coalition is powerful. Our coalition is precise, and, and we have focus. We have global impact. Um, we need justice. We need to make these waste picker jobs obsolete. Why does this job even exist? The job exists to, it's the backbone of the plastic waste strike that we, have, we are participating in. Um, we need to get rid of these jobs, but to do that, we're going to have to radically change the waste trade, the waste trade economy. Um, I am here. I want to see this through. Please, please come to me. Thank you. <laughs>